Hey guys, the Fire Brothers here. It's just me. And even though I'm busy with college, I still strive to give you some quality entertainment. So that is why today, I figured that the best content to give you is about a topic that's about 10 years old. Or, I don't know, around that margin? Like, how long ago did Follow Cybertron came out? Oh my god, that was 2012? Wow. <laughs> it sure makes you feel old now, doesn't it? Anyways, these are the jokes. I hope you're enjoying them. But in all seriousness, I've been busy with college, you know, the work's starting to pile up even though it's just the second week, but I still promise to do my best and give you quality content. But before we begin, I kinda wanna give a shout out to um, a couple of my Discord people because as you guys may already know, I did start a bit of a contest in my Discord for people who can make Blood Rain fan art. Blood Rain is essentially our Mary Sue Ray OC from uh, the Transformers Experience series. I made her for that series in particular and now she's kind of become a meme slash joke on my Discord and a little bit on my channel. You have like a lot of creative liberty. If you want to make her out of Legos or whatever, you can. Just as long as I can tell it's Blood Rain. If she doesn't look close enough, then I won't give you a shout out. And also no stick figures. But I'm gonna give two shots per episode. So this episode's shot goes to Sam Rabet who made this amazing Blood Rain memes and oh my god I just love it so much. Uh, not only because they're actually kind of funny but at the same time because there's a certain someone on my Discord server who gets really triggered by them. I won't say anything more than that. You need to join to my Discord and find out. But anyways, the second shot goes to Wheelie Harry's 04. Thank you, a simple name to spell out, thank you. And she said, he's, well pff, I say she, but it could be a he, you never know. Actually, it's probably he, girls don't exist on the internet. He says, meet Moviebird's blood rain, and oh my god, he made her thick. Like, shatter levels of thick. Like, I feel like that's gonna become a new meme on my channel, and I hope it doesn't, but it looks great, man. I might take some inspiration from your drawing to make like a different version of Blood Rain for the next Transformers 6 weird thing that we're gonna do soon. Anyways, now that we got the shoutouts out of the way, we can move on to talking about this guy. And I'm not gonna lie, the first time I saw this trailer, I was like, who is that guy? Is that Metroplex? And years later, it doesn't look like anyone has bothered to figure out who this guy is, much less cared. No, really, I just spent a couple of hours looking for like information about this guy, and I couldn't really find much, if anything. But yeah, this Titan was left, you know, in this um, horrendous state in the Transformers Full of Sabtron map called Tempest. Now, Tempest is right around the sea of rust. You can tell because of all the rust going on. And even this guy showcases a bit of rust going on here and there. First off, is this an Autobot? Yes, I'm pretty sure this guy's an Autobot because by the time of War for Cybertron, the Decepticon's only true real weapon of war was Trypticon, the only thing that resembled a Titan. So this guy is actually a Titan. And more specifically, an Autobot Titan. I mean, you got the chest Autobot insignia there. And before, you know, some of you guys go like, Fire, that's not the Autobot insignia, it looks different. Well, pain can sometimes, you know, um, get corroded and eroded away, so it's hand wave. And also, have you seen how Hasbro and anyone that deals with Transformers handles the Autobot and Decepticon insignias? They often mess them up on purpose for least relevant character so if there's an Autobot insignia or not it's not really a big deal just so you know so before i begin talking about this guy and his identity first i'm gonna like you know address the elephant in the room is he alive well if you can survive getting half your body caught up your head decapitated and i don't know your spine rip off and yeah he's he's a pretty alive boy right now no but seriously um in the map, you can actually enter his organs, like his chest has like a really open area where people can go in and fight inside of him. So this guy, um, doesn't really have a spark. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I know it's been a long time since I played the game, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a spark. So why is the eye light up? Well, it could be that either A, there's a bit of energy jump flowing around and he's still able to, you know, shine his eye. Or B, which is the most disturbing scenario, his brain still active, meaning that this guy is still conscious, which is probably a fate worse than death. It actually kind of reminds me of animated Megatron when he was just a head. 
Like he was still and didn't move at all, but you could see his one red eye lighting up. That actually kind of reminds me of that, and I believe that that's and I believe that this guy right here is a bit of a reference to animated Megatron. I'm pretty sure Full Cybertron came up right after animated was done, like at least you know sometime after animated was you know over. So I think this is one of those hidden slash you know small Easter eggs. Now for this guy's identity, who is he? Well, I did tons of research and it's really hard. It's not Omega Supreme, it's not Metroplex, because I still see people that are saying that this guy's Metroplex, this guy's Omega Supreme. No, it's not. Stop. Please stop saying that. It's not. A YouTuber named Teletramom... Oh my god, that's a weird name. Made a video exploring this map, but, you know, out of bounds. And after looking at his video over and over, I didn't exactly find much that could tell me about the identity of this Titan right here. As you guys can see here, he's trying to like, you know, go over him to try and get a better look at him. And you can also tell that this was done a really long time ago because, well, his recording is kind of But something interesting that I found out here is that this guy actually has some weird um, cables running from his back, like into the ground. And they're light up, you know, light blue, which is the color of Energon in the game. So I'm guessing this guy is still somewhat active, but either the Autobots or the Decepticons are trying to extract the Energon away from him. This kind of makes sense if you think about it, because in this map, this guy is like the thing that stands out the most. He's at the center of the map. He's like the center, you know, of attention. And from what I remember, you can actually go inside of him and you can like you know pick up some energy to heal yourself if you take damage during battle so this guy's still producing energy he probably has some energy left and the reason why the autobots and the Decepticons are here is because they're fighting over the last drops of energy you know that are coming from this guy and honestly that's nothing too surprising metroplex and follow cybertron you know donated his energy for the art to leave the Decepticons are not above you know plunging autobot corpses or even you know repurposing some of their own to serve their own needs. I'm thinking that the Decepticons are probably the ones that are extracting the energy and the other ones are kinda just here to stop them or you know to put this guy out of his misery because I mean come on look at the poor guy there's no coming back from him. I know that there's a lot of people right now who are probably saying this guy is clearly Fortress Maximus and to that I have to say no I'm pretty sure he's not Fortress. Fortress Maximus and this guy have completely different colors. This guy is black and red and Fortress Maximus is blue, light blue, black, red, a bit of green in there, and he has blue eyes. So it's clearly not Fortress Maximus. And before you tell me, no, no fire, you're wrong, I see some blue in there, this guy's clearly blue. No, it's not. I ran this image and various different images of this guy through Photoshop, and none of them were even close to the color blue, so... Yeah, this guy is clearly a black color. What's interesting about this guy is that it seems that his head is a bit of a mismatch between different characters. Like, I see a bit of Ultra Magnus in there, a bit of Optimus in there, a bit of Metroplex, at least in the way the faceplate is. I feel like Hyman kinda just threw a bunch of assets together and made this guy. He has a red eye, which is, you know, kinda weird because most all of us kinda just have blue eyes, but Metroplex had red eyes and I didn't see anyone complaining about that, so... Pretty interesting. I've been going over and over, you know, looking at the different heads in Follow Cybertron, and none of them truly, you know, exactly resemble this guy. There are some that do, but like I said, his head is kind of a mismatch between different, you know, Transformers characters. Primarily Autobots, which makes me, you know, believe that this guy's an Autobot, like I previously stated, in case you didn't believe me about that. I looked through concept art, and I didn't find much. It's really hard to tell who this guy is. Now, something really interesting that some of the people in my Discord brought up is that this guy looks a lot like Broadside. Now, I know that I mentioned Broadside here before because, you know, Broadside was planned to be the Energon Transport in Fall of Cybertron, the one that the Combaticons blew up in a previous episode. If you look at Titan's Returns Broadside, there's an uncanny resemblance between these two, at least when it comes to the chest. The chest fits almost perfectly. And, well, the head obviously doesn't, but it's shocking how well it fits. And in G1, Broadside was a bit of a titan who could triple change. So, it honestly kind of fits. Kind of. Like, you guys have probably already figured out, this is from the Titans Return Torland. The Titans Return came years after, you know, um, Follow Cybertron. So this, is, this guy is clearly not supposed to, you know, um, 
represent this guy because he came years later. Although he matches incredibly well in his G1 self, I guess you could make the argument Sordo does match. It's still not enough to convince me that this guy could possibly be broadside. It could be. And it's not much of a stretch because, I mean, look at G1 Ironhide and Warfare Savage on Ironhide. Warfare Savage on Ironhide looks similar to G1, but it's not the same thing. So, the same thing could be said for Broadside over here. You know, they look similar ish, but Warfare Savage on Broadside looks completely different. That could always be the case. And there are no other Titans that I found that basically match this guy's look. So, what do I think? Well, two options. It, this is either, you know, a nod to G1 broadside, or this is just some random character that, you know, Hyman Studios kind of just threw together, which, honestly, I'm leaning a bit more towards the fact that there's just some random titan that they just threw around, you know, and put him in the Sea of Rust for whatever reason. But at the same time, Titan's Return broadside looks uncannily similar to this guy, which I'm not saying i'm not confirming this or you know saying that this is real or whatever like it's just my theory is that maybe years down the line after follow sabatron hasbro kind of just saw this random titan you know in that one map from follow sabatron and they were like you know what i think we could make a good toy inspired by this guy that would explain why this guy somewhat resembles the titan in here but at the same time it will have to be you know plan now or it's just a coincidence it's one of those two and before you say fire there's no way that hasbro saw this guy and they were like hey let's make a toy of him in actual day that's actually not true because there has been times in the past where hasbro took a character that you know never got a toy or a concept from you know years in the past and basically made a new toy out of them one of the most recent examples will be the shadow riders from you know um the studio series tone line they're clearly inspired by you know lockdown's mercenaries and for the longest time we didn't have a name for lockdown's mercenaries we kind of just refer to them as mercenaries or lockdown's mercenaries but because the studio series now we know that these guys are called shadow riders you know the toy made a fact about the characters canon so who's not to say that the same thing could happen here this toy makes this guy be broadside instead of the other way around you know this was a broadside inspired toy maybe hasbro and high moon never planned for this guy to be broadside but years later hasbro was like you know let's make a toy out of this guy and they made him and called him broadside so that will make the full of Savatron character broadside. It's just a bit confusing. I feel like it's gonna be a bit confusing for some of you guys. But the point is that much like how the Shadow Riders, you know, gave us a new gave us new info about Lockdown's mercenaries, this guy basically turns this guy into broadside. At least that's what I think it could be a possibility. It's either broadside or it's just, you know, a random nobody. I definitely don't think it's Fortress Maximus. This guy's pretty interesting, the lore of the map's kind of interesting. The thing that, you know, kind of bothers me is how did this guy end up here? I mean, he's clearly damaged, he's missing half of his torso, so he probably got killed in a battle, probably against the Decepticons. I doubt that this was, you know, um, pre-Civil War, because we do know that if you go by the G1 logic, there were plenty of Titans before the war with the Decepticons started. So I'm guessing that this guy right here is part of, you know, one of the casualties of the war. And somehow he ended up in the Sea of Rust after, you know, being heavily damaged by the Decepticons. And years later, by the time of Follow Cybertron, both Autobots and Decepticons are trying to get whatever remains of Energon, you know, out of him and out of the Sea of Rust. So, yeah. Oh, I should say before I go, because I know there's going to be some people saying that, Fire, how can there be two broadsides? You talked about broadside in your previous video, and now you're saying this guy could be broadside? Well, there's a simple solution to that. The broadside I talked about in the previous video was not canon, because he was concept art. Concept art and appearing in the official thing are two different things. For example, there's plenty of, you know, concept art of, you know, Optimus Prime with a trailer in the Bumblebee movie. Like, you know, his G1 self, but we never see that in the movie, so the concept art is not canon. When I talked about the previous broadside, there was an idea to make the transport turn into broadside, but that never happened, so it's not true. So, you know, this guy being broadside is now open because the last guy doesn't exist. This is the broadside, if that makes any sense. But the point is, the other guy, not canon, so he doesn't really factor into this, since he was just an idea. 
But anyways guys, that's it for this video. Shoutouts goes to our patrons, Morrice Prime, Ipos Fate, Mario Gordon, Predator King Hunter Plays, Mr. Baby Duke, and the absolute madman himself, Jordan the Great, who donated $100. Thanks for your support, guys. Make sure to go check out their channels, links in the description down below. And if you guys want to shout out yourself, all you have to do is donate to my Patreon. By donating to my Patreon, you get quite a few rewards. You can get a shout out to your channel, you can request your own videos, you can collab with me in some of my videos if you choose to. You get a special role on my Discord server. You can also get early access to my videos and stuff like that. There's plenty of rewards to choose from and it's entirely optional. It sounds like a pretty good deal, right? But keep in mind, this is entirely optional since freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Thank you guys for donating, it's much appreciated. So yeah, thanks a lot guys. But anyways guys, let me know what you thought of this video. Do you agree with me or do you think that this could be Fortress Maximus or maybe Broadside? I'm leaning more to the idea that this guy could probably be just, you know, some random titan. There's quite a few um, coincidence pointing to this guy being broadside, you know, in the actual, you know, game. It's all very tricky, it's one of those things that remains a mystery and one of those things that sadly not a lot of people talk about. Like, every so often I will see a few comments on YouTube when I'm browsing, you know, follow Sabatron gameplay or even follow Sabatron trailers. People will be like, hey, who's that guy? But they will never really, you know, come with anything concrete, they will say, he looks like, you know, um, Omega Supreme, Monster Magnus, Metroplex, and so on, some people will get the wrong answer, but for the most part, this guy remains a mystery. But yeah guys, that's it for this video, hopefully you all enjoy, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe guys.